For centuries, the state of California has drawn people west. In 1849, there was gold in the hills. By the 1920s, it was to a place called Hollywood. More recently, the digital frontier has beckoned some of the greatest minds. But throughout its history, there has been one undeniable constant attraction, California's majestic beauty. From its coastlines to its mountains, the Golden State provides a natural splendor that must be experienced in person. It is no surprise then that some of the world's best cyclists are traveling west this spring, like so many before, to test themselves and their craft in this place of wonder. And this is a dash for the line now. It's the Frenchman, Julien Alaphilippe. They spread across the road, and Revere is going to take this one. Peter Sagan comes to the line. What a ride that was today. For those who came west and thrived in the Golden State, history has proven that success here promises greatness on every stage. Sagan wanted somebody in front so he could come from behind and get his stage win in the Tour de France. This is going to be a formality. There's nobody can match the speed of this amazing kid. It's the 2018 Amgen Tour of California. The Amgen Tour of California preview show is brought to you by Amgen, in the race to dramatically improve patients' lives. Visit us at Amgen.com. AEG, giving the world reason to cheer. By Lexus, experience amazing. And by Visit California. Start your tour of the Golden State at VisitCalifornia.com. In a given cycling season, if the Grand Tours like the Tour de France are the main course, then shorter events like the day-long Flesh Wallon or week-long Amgen Tour of California are the mouth-watering appetizers. Not only do they prepare riders for the multi-week adventures, but they also give fans a big helping of action-packed excitement. Peter Sagan and Mark Cavendish better find out where each other is here. Cavendish comes away. The Max missile is on a direct hit. The Amgen Tour of California, in particular, stands out for its world-class pelotons, incredible landscapes, and sunny weather. A relief for many riders weary from springtime slogs in Europe. Actually, I like California. There's all the time good weather. <laughs> California is a big and beautiful and diverse state. Just the way the sun and the ocean, the cliffs, the mist, everything, it was just like you were riding on a movie set, basically. I've had people ask me all the time, what's, your, what's the coolest place you've ever raced in? And I always think about it for a while and go, you know, it's pretty cool right here in California, honestly. One of the iconic states of the whole of the United States is California. It's got everything. It's got great roads. It's got great beauty. All a recipe for success. Conditions were just about perfect throughout last year's Amgen Tour of California, ensuring high-quality racing throughout the week. In 2017, the course worked its way north to south. Starting with a high-speed finish in the state capital, Marcel Kittle broke away from a final sprint group to claim a thrilling stage one victory. Marcel Kittle takes it from the world champion, Peter Sagan. That was a textbook victory. But no two days are ever the same in cycling, particularly at the Amgen Tour of California. After the frantic finish in Sacramento, Stage 2's mountains spit the sprinters off the back, and Marcel Kittle's brief lead in the race was over. The back end of the race, and that's where we find Marcel Kittle. It's not a really a sprinter's race this year. By the day's end in San Jose, a narrow Rafal Micah victory over George Bennett set the stage for a compelling duel for the Amgen Tour of California's top prize. Rafa Mica has won the yellow jersey for now. The yellow jersey is awarded to the cyclist with the lowest cumulative time at the end of each day's racing. After stage two, Micah held on to the leader's jersey for the next three stages. Your new race leader is Rafa Mica. Meanwhile, Peter Sagan claimed his 16th Amgen Tour of California stage victory in stage three extending his record mark. And Americans Evan Huffman and Andrew Talansky provided a highlight for the home crowd 
with victories in stage four and five. Andrew Chalansky's won the day. We took a great victory. We won the Queen Stage of California. We're going to enjoy that today, and tomorrow we'll focus on the time trial and hope for the best. It was the Stage 6 time trial around Big Bear Lake that ultimately determined last year's winner. Starting the day in second place, New Zealand's George Bennett turned a six-second deficit into a 35-second advantage ahead of Micah and the rest of the field. And no one uh, expected this less than I did. That, uh, I mean, just started riding, like, pushing, 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 and when I crossed the line, I, all the cameras were coming and stuff, and I thought, maybe I've done something good, and then... <laughs> Nick Miller, I'm wearing a yellow jersey. <laughs> In the seventh and final stage, 27-year-old Evan Huffman of Rally Cycling claimed his second stage victory at the Amgen Tour of California. Well, Evan Huffman, he never dreamt of two. As for Bennett, he made his own history as well. After not losing any time in the final stage, Bennett became the first Kiwi to win a World Tour cycling event, claiming last year's yellow jersey. This will be the 13th year a cyclist leaves California with the yellow jersey. Introduced in 2006, the Amgen Tour of California has been a proving ground for the biggest names in the sport. The event has also been a trailblazer in women's cycling with the addition of a women's race in 2008. Now in its 11th year, the Amgen Tour of California women's race empowered with SRAM has grown both in size and popularity putting women cycling in the spotlight. Women cycling is really exciting. Because our races are a little bit shorter, they're often more aggressive from the start of the race, and I think just make for really good watching. Last year, it was the US women at center stage for most of the race. Three different Americans won the first three stages, while Washington native Katie Hall won the Queen stage in Lake Tahoe to propel her into first place, heading into the fourth and final day. Well, this stage is all about sprinting and time bonuses. But Hall lost her one-second lead over Anna Vanderbregen when the two-time Olympic medalist earned a time bonus in the intermediate sprint to upset Hall and claim victory. Anna Vanderbregen from one second behind. She's now one second in the lead. After last year's dramatic conclusion, the women return to California for a roaring encore on May 17th. Once again, the Amgen Tour of California delivers two World Tour races in one unforgettable week. It's the biggest stage race in North America. It's definitely the most exciting race of the year. I just feel very good in America, and I have nice feeling and relax. And Tour of California, it's the best race. Coming up, a preview of this year's course. And we go inside the peloton to see what's on riders' minds while they turn the pedals. Springtime in California. Snow in the mountains is melted, giving way to lush hillsides and flowing streams. Welcome breezes drift in from the Pacific and take the edge off the sun's heat. It's difficult to find a more enjoyable combination, particularly for cycling. The Amgen Tour of California allows riders to experience all that the Golden State has to offer in one of its best months of the year. There's just a really big variety of terrain and the crowd's always good and since it moved up May, the weather's usually nice. After beginning last year in the north, 2018's Amgem Tour of California opens in the south, in the city of Long Beach. It's been more than 10 years since Long Beach hosted a stage, but this year's course will give fans plenty of opportunities for lasting memories. The biggest benefit of the circuit, I think, is for the fans. It's easy to come out and you get to see guys kind of positioning and fighting and see how the race is developing. Athletes will travel 83 miles in stage one, presented by Amgen's Breakaway from Cancer, completing 12 laps around the city's famed waterfront with the iconic Queen Mary as the backdrop. Launched in 1936, the thousand foot ship brought luminaries from around the world to sea. Celebrities like Bob Hope and Clark Gable and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor all spent time aboard the Queen Mary. Perhaps fittingly, 
Cycling royalty should be considered among the favorites in this opening sprint stage. Look at the speed of the riders, they can see the finish now. Mark Cavendish is the embodiment of grit. Cavendish comes away. And speed. This is going to be victory for Mark Cavendish. I'll tell you what, I don't think we need a photo for that one. He trails only the great Eddie Merckx for the most stage wins at the Tour de France. Mark Cavendish has just got his 30th win of the Tour de France. Though the sprinting legend hails from the Isle of Man, where the weather is a bit colder and wetter than a California spring, it seems the Golden State suits him well. The Manx missile is on a direct hit. That it was textbook. Cavendish has 10 stage wins at the Amgen Tour of California. The speed of this man, he breathes confidence. And two green jerseys for winning the sprints competition. But that's why Cavendish is the best. And while his intensity can make him seem prickly at times. So annoying. So annoying. What was what? What was what? My why are you taking my tape recorder? Yeah. Mark, I would like my tape recorder. Cavendish also has a softer side. He's a husband and a doting father. And in California, he's a fan favorite. Seeing the Manx missile up close is one of the hallmarks of stage one in the entire Amgen Tour of California, as fans have an intimate view of their favorite cyclists. Whether it's following the riders through city streets or chasing them up mountains, fans can cheer on the best cyclists in the world without leaving their hometown. I think at each stage, the support is huge. The people that are completely dressed up and running alongside the riders. Oh man, I hate cowbells, but it was alive and feisty, and that made it fun. I think that's a really cool part about racing in California. After a day of Oceanside Beauty in stage one, Riders will take on the Queen stage of the Amgen Tour of California in stage two, presented by Lexus. What I've heard, it's a, it's a great place, a uh, lot of big roads, and uh, yeah, also some nice climbs. Named after the most dynamic piece in chess, the Queen stage usually delivers the biggest changes to the leaderboard due to a brutal day of climbing. Stage two begins up the coast from Long Beach in Ventura, a historic and ideal beachside getaway. But with nearly 100 miles to cover and a mile and a half of elevation gain, riders will likely soon be missing the harbor views as they leave Ventura and head into the Topa Topa Mountains. Here, the men will encounter three King of the Mountain climbs, which will help determine who gets to don the Lexus King of the Mountain jersey. Over the course of five hours, there are competitions within each stage. When riders encounter climbs of a certain incline and length, points are available to the first athletes who reach the summit. Collect the most king or queen of the mountain points, and a cyclist is rewarded with the day's polka dot jersey. Over the top, maximum points for Daniel Oss, as that will put him in the lead in the King of the Mountains competition. Whether it's a grand tour or a week-long race like the Amgen Tour of California, these mountain stages usually separate the overall contenders from the pack. It's a lot of fun in the, in the road, in the climb, and, and when I have good legs, I need to try more attack. Last year, Poland's Rafał Mica relied on his climbing strength to not only contend for the polka dot jersey, but the yellow jersey as well. While his teammate Peter Sagan is known for bike handling and creative finishes, Rafał Mica is one of the best climbers in the business, finding his groove on challenging ascents. When I have good legs, it's more easy than <laughs> then, uh, you have some fun also in the climb. Rafael Baker is still squeezing out every second. He has three stage wins at the Tour de France. This is the moment, the biggest win of his career. And a 2016 Olympic bronze medal. What a race, what a ride. Micah's flamboyant former boss, Oleg Tinkoff, once offered to buy Micah James Bond's car if the pole could win a second stage at the 2014 Tour de France. Micah took the bait and the win. Rafael Micah punches the sky. But Tinkoff wriggled out of the deal. <laughs> Better contract than a new car. Now, Micah has made clear his focus is on leg power, not horsepower, as he takes on the Golden State once again. In the end, I, I hope so I have good legs, like last year, and yeah, we tried to something. The 
the Polish rider has excelled in California, and for him and other rising stars, the Amgen Tour of California has played a critical role in their development. And this is a dash for the line now. It's the Frenchman, Julien Alaphilippe. This is a special performance by TJ Van Garderen. The leader of the race is the winner of the day. Not only has it been a proving ground for these young cyclists, but the Amgem Tour of California is a sought after alternative to European races for riders of all ages and classifications. US, special Amgen California. Huge roads. Europe's very tight, very narrow, and we're in California, the, the roads are wider, so it's not as much of a fight for position at times. A smaller race in France, you might be in a hotel room almost sharing a bed, whereas California, they put you up in nice hotels, and it's, it's a lot more relaxed. The Amgen Tour of California has also become known for the numerous cyclists who use the race as a platform for giving back. Each day, the athlete who best exemplifies the character of those fighting serious illnesses is awarded the Amgen Breakaway from Cancer, Breakaway from Heart Disease Most Courageous Rider Jersey. Courage, tenacity, sacrifice, inspiration, optimism, determination, and perseverance will all be on display by those who wear this jersey. Hallmarks that inspire everyone connected to the fight against disease. Peter Sagan comes to the line, he gets the win, he's chosen a new victory salute. Though Peter Sagan isn't a big talker. Peter, how can you put into words how you feel right now? Exquisite. <laughs> His dominant performances and quirky personality have made him a superstar. This guy's been giving it a hard time all the way through the race and uh, I hope that he has a bad day one of these days because uh, yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. too strong. He's not too good. <laughs> <laughs> he's still grumpy about yesterday because he didn't win. This man is a showman. What a great show performance here by Peter Sagan. He doesn't shy away from celebration or unconventional cross-training methods. Sagan hails from Slovakia, but he's always had a touch of Hollywood, too. just for fun. <laughs> it was uh, my idea to, <laughs> I don't know, it, it was good or not, but it was just to do something crazy and uh, I just did it and sure. I think it's funny. <laughs> Watch out for Sagan. Look at the acceleration of the world champion, Peter Sagan. Crack that one big time. Capable of capturing success at the classics, like Perry Roubaix. That Peter Sagan. Or thriving in sprint finishes. Peter Sagan doing this all by himself. Just another day in the office. At the Amgen Tour of California, he's right at home. Fun is important to leave, I think. <laughs> With 16 stage wins at this race, more than any other rider. Is he going to do it again? Four out of four for Peter Sagan. Sagan proved his versatility with an improbable overall win back in 2015. The new King of California, Peter Sagan! If he hopes to claim the yellow jersey once again, stage three will be key. With its rolling hills and a sprint finish, Stage 3, presented by Lexus, offers a mixed bag for riders. The course features six King of the Mountain climbs across the 122-mile route. But unlike the uphill finish in Stage 2, Stage 3 ends at the Laguna Seca Recreation Area, known to many motorsports fans for its technically challenging course. This race course is known throughout the world. It is a very challenging track and it is a world famous icon. The cyclists must navigate the famed corkscrew before what should be a sprint finish from a select group. Sagan's trying to get through in the middle. It's going to be a very, very tight finish as he comes up to the line. Peter Sagan gets it right on the line. I got to a point where I saw I don't have this uh, last uh, percentage on talent what you need to win this real big races. Cycling is a team sport. 
Big name riders are helped on the road to victory by workers that block the wind, carry water, and fight for position. So I said, okay, then I can make the life a little bit more easier to the leaders who have this 3-5% uh, more talent and to help them to win these races. When Peter has his team up on the front like he did today, he feels that pressure, he feels that love that the team has for him. He wants to pull it off like he does time and time again. At the Amgen Tour of California, teams of varying sizes and budgets are on the same field of play. World Tour teams go against pro-continental teams with smaller budgets and fewer riders. He starts to really drive hard. This allows rising domestic talents to test their mettle against cycling's best. I think it's great for the race, honestly. Hoffman gets it on the line. We saw last year with rally cycling, they took two stages. They're aggressive, they're hungry, and they're pretty unpredictable. This could be an amazing story for the team rally boys. Is he going to hold it on? Evan Huffman hits the line. Mixes it up and uh, makes my life kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, is what it is. <laughs> the most level playing field for the cyclists will be the time trial. No team support, no competitors to push them just a lone rider against the clock. <laughs> There's really nothing that can compare to the pain and suffering and surprisingly the enjoyment of riding a good time trial. It's a unique discipline that really can't be replicated in, in any other sport. It's only you against the clock. Uh, it's very difficult, especially when you, when you throw a tough time trial into the middle of a stage race. In a time trial, a cyclist must find something deep within himself to push past the pain and discover the fastest possible time on the course. They had to put the hammer down. He is in serious pain. Time trials at the Amgen Tour of California have inspired memorable performances. TJ Van Garden will win the Amgen Tour of California. Look at that. Great ride by George Bennett. Last year, George Bennett essentially clinched the yellow jersey with his effort. As George Bennett races for the line, it's going to be very tight. We think he's in by a single second. Hi, Mum. This year's time trial at the Amgen Tour of California is Stage 4, presented by Tag Heuer. The race returns to San Jose for the 12th time. And for the third time, the city hosts a time trial. Both previous occasions, San Jose held this race against the clock. The stage's winner went on to win the overall tour. This year's Race of Truth is a scenic 21-mile route that includes one sizable climb, followed by two descents. Stage four will give the leaders opportunity to extend their margins on a challenging ride. At this level, the differences in physical gifts are relatively small. What separates the greats is their mental fortitude. Uh, you're, you're already a bit fatigued from, from a few tough stages, uh, potentially weather going into it, and you just got to buckle down and, and, and focus and really get into the mindset that you're going to war for those 40 kilometers. Coming up, the Amgen Tour of California's women's race, empowered with SRAM, kicks into high gear. And we take a look at how the contenders for the yellow jersey on the men's side measure up. There are many reasons to travel west to California. Miles of shoreline, glitz and glamour, and unspoiled natural beauty. Roughly the size of France, the Golden State has more to offer than most could possibly see in one swing. But the Amgen Tour of California takes a mighty cut at showing off some of the timeless highlights. Just one of the many reasons this spring ritual is America's premier bike race. Double acceleration as she's Pip Rivera on the line. 
The Amgen Tour of California women's race, empowered with SRAM, takes place in Northern California. With two flat stages in the Sacramento area, bookending a scenic climbing stage around South Lake Tahoe. If this year's race is anything at all like last year's, fans are in for a special treat. The tour gets underway just outside the state capitol with a winding route along the Sacramento River Delta. The relatively flat 77-mile Stage 1 course, presented by Visit California, begins and ends in historic Elk Grove. It should provide a blistering finish to the start of the women's tour. Like the women, the men will also be sprinting to the line in Elk Grove in their Stage 5, presented by Visit California. About an hour after the women kick off their fireworks in Elk Grove, the men will start in Stockton, California's inland port city. They will be able to enjoy the wonderful farmland that we have here. A little bit of that delta breeze at their back if they're lucky. The 110-mile stage will feature just over 2,500 feet of climbing and only one notable ascent, meaning the likes of Kittle, Kristoff, Ewan, Cavendish, and Sagan will most likely factor in the race's decisive moments. Sprint stages are the highlight of the inside race for the Visit California Sprint Classification jersey, awarded to the rider with the most points earned in intermediate sprints and finishes. Yes, for those fans that put a premium on speed, this contest will be one to keep an eye on. Regardless of whether a cyclist is a professional, amateur, or weekend warrior, cycling is about more than stage wins and jerseys. It is a lifestyle, a commitment to physical and mental health. When you start to really focus on living an active lifestyle, like it, it's incredible. You know, you wake up, you have energy, you're, you're ready to go. You're, you're excited to get out and just push your body to the limit. I really love the feeling of speed and, and the freedom it gives you. Um, it frees my, my mind. I get to look at beautiful things. You feel like a bird. Um, you, you just beautiful. I love it. It's so much fun to be a bird. It's not just the sport, but it can also be like a means of transportation and you know, leisure and a hobby. The bike racing scene is huge in California. I mean, I feel like it's a pretty good state to be healthy. For Corinne Rivera, cycling in California is the ultimate combination. While much of Rivera's time is spent on the road, she hasn't forgotten her home state. I'm really a beach girl, so I, I grew up pretty close to the beach. I find peace and, and calmness being near water. But, you know, there's beauty everywhere in California, and we have everything. You can surf and snowboard in the same day. Being up in the mountains is amazing, too, and I don't think you can really go, go wrong anywhere in California. Southern California proved an ideal setting to establish her cycling career. Last year, the Amgen Breakaway from Heart Disease women's race empowered with SRAM marked a key moment for Rivera with a win at stage three. They sped across the road and Rivera is going to take this one. She's not going to be challenged. She's earned a name for herself with her sprinting prowess. And this year's race is a chance for Rivera to showcase her speed. It's one of the best feelings when you want to go all out in 100 110% even, and you can really push your body to go past that limit. She was brilliant. That was picture perfect. But even just being outside, just feeling like the air on your skin and feeling the speed and adrenaline, and that's something that I really enjoy, and that's what gets me outside. While for many, California is the home for a healthy lifestyle, there are certain indulgences in the Golden State that are hard to pass up. California definitely has, has some pretty good food. Maybe when we finish the race, we, we can take in and out. I think Halo Top is made in uh, California. A locale ice cream that I've been mildly addicted to lately. I like the, there is a lot of Mexican food, you know, the famous burritos. California definitely has quite a few good burrito places. Sushi, sushi always is great there, especially in Ventura. Usually after the race, I don't care where I go. I just need to have burger and fries. Ladies and gentlemen, your race will teach you.
while it's been five years since an American has won the Amgen Tour of California, the race was initially dominated by riders from the host country. The American will win the Amgen Tour of California. Americans won five of the first six editions, including three victories by Levi Leipheimer, the only man who owns multiple yellow jerseys from the tour. A big round of applause for the three-feet man, Levi Leipheimer. In 2008, Leipheimer took the overall lead after stage three, but essentially sealed his victory with a memorable time trial win in stage five. 30, 46, and did he know or what? There's plenty of history already in the Amgen Tour of California's 13 year run. And this year's race ambassadors know a thing or two about making it. With three Olympic gold medals, Kristen Armstrong is an American cycling legend. Oh my God. She is devouring this course. It is going to be Kristen Armstrong, an incredible ride by the American. In her second year as an ambassador, Armstrong aims to inspire the next generation of promising riders. Known as Fast Freddy in the peloton for his impressive finishing speed, Freddy Rodriguez was born in Colombia and moved to Los Angeles as a child, becoming a standard bearer for California's cycling culture. An Olympian in 2000, a stage winner at the Giro d'Italia, and a seven-time Tour de France veteran, Rodriguez returns to the Amgen Tour of California to promote a healthy lifestyle and work with aspiring young cyclists. Hey, dear friends, here we start, live coverage on the bike with the Yen. Yen's vote was beloved by fans during his cycling career. Among his many highlights, a stint in the yellow jersey at the 2005 Tour de France after an epic ride in Malouze. His authenticity, daring breakaways, and quotable one-liners like <laughs> shut up legs earned him a sizable following. Now retired from competitive racing, Vogt will serve as an ambassador at the Amgen Tour of California for the third time and a member of the NBC broadcast team. But well, Yancy, you almost destroyed your Australian breakaway partner on that day, didn't you? Well, we had a bit of help uh, to start off with. Uh, look at the musketeers fighting on this tower there. How beautiful is that? Just check that. The three musketeers. <laughs> but back to racing. Wherever Vogt goes, fun is likely to follow. Thank you. I'm a really happy man tonight. Yes, 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 yes. Vogt was never dominant in the mountains, but like all cyclists, he appreciates how they give shape to a leaderboard. Everyone in the peloton is fast until the road tilts upward. The higher and longer the climb, the bigger time gaps riders can create between themselves and their competitors. Suffering is definitely a huge part of this sport. There's no way to really do this sport unless you can embrace the suffering and just being comfortable in that pain cave. When it all comes together perfectly, exactly how you plan, flying up these climbs, it's truly a magical feeling. The men will be tested one final time in the mountains on stage six, presented by Visit California. The penultimate stop of the 2018 Amgen Tour of California begins in Folsom, a town known by many music lovers for Johnny Cash's 1968 live album at Folsom Prison. A man that knew how to sing about pain, Cash may have turned a lyric or two about the suffering riders will endure in stage six. Over the course of this 123-mile route, the Peloton will climb nearly 16,000 feet, more than half the height of Mount Everest, before a summit finish at the Heavenly Mountain Resort in South Lake Tahoe. If there's any late movement in the chase for the yellow jersey, it will likely happen on the road to Heavenly. The women will not be spared from pain on this day either. As stage two of the Amgen Tour of California women's race empowered with SRAM takes the cyclists around the South Lake Tahoe area in a demanding high alpine route. The women's course is particularly beautiful in terms of concentrating scenery. And they'll go through the same finish that they did last year into Heavenly. And I think anybody that rode that is going to remember just how challenging it was. The elevation and the really long sustained climbs make Tahoe hard. You have to be strong in order to do well on the climb. It's not just a tactical race, and there's no hiding if you don't have legs that day. Stage two, presented by Visit California, features nearly 70 miles of racing with more than 6,000 feet of elevation gain. 
there will be three Queen of the Mountain Points opportunities, but none more grueling than the Kingsbury Gray, eight miles in length with 2,600 feet of elevation gain and rising an average of 6%. The grade was introduced to the women's race last year and produced a memorable result. Katie Hall has put the move in here. She's now free to fly. I like the big climbs and big climbs at altitude. I'm really excited that we get to climb it again this year. Kathleen Hall has made the move well taken by the United Healthcare rider. Katie Hall gets in gear on challenging climbs. Look at the way Katie Hall comes across the line. She must be over the moon with that one. And like most people with a job to do, she isn't averse to a caffeine kick. My name is Katie. I'm going to make a cup of pour over coffee over here. Hall is hands on when it comes to her coffee. This part is so loud. <laughs> Good for our puny little biker arm. <laughs> I like coffee, and I really hate to drink coffee. If you're not self sufficient in making coffee, you have to drink some coffee, and that just makes me sad. Last year's Amgen Tour of California left Hall with some unfinished business. She lost her lead on the last day. And this is the worst possible result for Katie. There's no doubt that Anna van der Breggen has now reversed from one second behind. She's now one second in the lead. But with coffee in tow, Hall will be thirsty for victory this year. I live in California, and these are all roads that I've ridden before, and my, my friends and family can come out and watch. So this is really my favorite, favorite race of the year. I'd like to do better than second place by one second, and so I'd like to win California this year. A fresh cup of joe in the morning is sometimes all the motivation a cyclist needs to get out of bed and into the saddle. With a long and winding path ahead, a hot cup of coffee can fuel the soul and spur the body to conquer the day. The Amgen Tour of California preview show is brought to you by Amgen, in the race to dramatically improve patients' lives. Visit us at amgen.com. AEG, giving the world reason to cheer. By Lexus, experience amazing. And by Visit California. Start your tour of the Golden State at visitcalifornia.com. Riding in the Tour of California is always something I look forward to. California, I think, is kind of one of the greatest states in the U.S., if not the greatest state. I love California. You've got rolling hills, big mountains, big ocean views. You've got all sorts of different landscapes. Even though we are occupied a lot mentally with what's happening in the race, it still is nice to be in a beautiful place racing it. Makes it that little bit more enjoyable. Also among those with an affection for California, Megan Garnier. The 33-year-old grew up in New York, but has seen plenty of success on the roads of the Golden State. 2016 was a pivotal year for Garnier. Gritting her teeth in pain, this is Megan Garnier's race. She won the overall title at the Amgen Tour of California women's race empowered with SRAM. Victory goes to Megan Garnier, and I think she will be very satisfied with that. And competed in her first Olympic Games. But she started the 2017 season with a concussion and ended it with a broken jaw. Breaking my jaw has been a very interesting recovery and challenge. I have problems every day with it. Coming back into the peloton was difficult, I would say, but I was out there doing what I love to do. For Garnier, Last season's challenges serve as further inspiration to deliver, but also to simply enjoy the ride. When you're on your bike, you get to see all these different things, and you get to go places and explore where you live or where you're visiting. And I think that that's a great way to see the world. Garnier has proven she has what it takes to win in California, but there are several other riders capable of snagging the yellow jersey this year. Fellow American Katie Hall will be in the mix, as will Australian Annette Edmondson and a trio of riders from Team Canyon SRAM, including 2015 Amgen Tour of California winner Trixie Warren, American Alexis Ryan, and Polish climber Kasia Niva Doma.
On the men's side, there's no shortage of cyclists who could pull on the yellow jersey at this year's Amgen Tour of California, as it promises to be one of the most competitive editions ever. Rafal Micah's prowess on the steep stuff makes him one of this year's race favorites. He finished second in the overall last year and had a stage two victory. 2013 yellow jersey winner, American TJ Van Garderen fronts Team BMC. He's been a driving force at the Tour de France and returns to California after a big crash earlier this season injured his neck. There's been a fall on the right-hand side of the peloton. May well have been TJ Van Garderen. Also hailing from the U.S., Lawson Craddock's been sniffing around the podium for a couple of years now. Finishing eighth, third, and fifth previously, he's got the time trial engine and climbing legs to be a serious threat. Cycling is a brotherly pastime for the Yateses. While Simon prepares for the Giro d'Italia, identical twin Adam has been training to hit the roads of California. In 2016, he finished fourth at the Tour de France. Nielsen Paulus is only 21 years old, and he's already been dubbed as the next American Grand Tour rider. It is Paulus, oh my goodness, the youngest rider in the entire peloton. This kid is so impressive. Paulus made his Amgen Tour of California debut two years ago and finished ninth. And he looks primed to be a serious contender in 2018. For Team Sky's Egan Bernal, he just finished as runner-up at the Tour of Romandy and holds more promise than just about any 21-year-old has a right to. If Paulus and Bernal don't take yellow in California, they have a great chance at earning the Tag Heuer Best Young Rider jersey, presented to the under 25-year-old cyclist with the fastest overall time. What a week it has been for this kid! Whoever is in the lead heading into the finale on Saturday, they'll be tested on the streets of the state capitol. With both the men and women beginning and ending in Sacramento, cycling fans will get to see plenty of action before the overall winner puts on the yellow jersey. And with flat courses, riders will be sprinting to the line in bunches. Sacramento, the farm to fork capital of California. It's one of the best cycling towns in the USA. For the women, stage three, presented by Amgen's Breakaway from Heart Disease, is a 2.2 mile circuit in the center of downtown Sacramento. With 20 laps, stage three will take riders past historical landmarks and trendy neighborhoods. This fast and technical course should set the stage for an exciting finish down L Street in front of the State Capitol building. Double acceleration as she's Pip Rivera on the line. It's just a lot of speed and you get to see so much in so little time. If you like speed and adrenaline like me, you should show up. <laughs> if last year was any preview, the downtown circuit is destined to provide quite the drama. The men also begin and end their final stage in Sacramento. But first, head out of town across the historic Tower Bridge for a tour along the Sacramento River. Opened in 1935, Tower Bridge was the first vertical lift bridge in California and one of its most beautiful. After riding through Sacramento's fertile agricultural fields, the Peloton powers back across Tower Bridge and into Sacramento for a dramatic finale. Riders will take three laps along the Capitol Circuit before charging down L Street to close the 2018 Amgen Tour of California. The top sprinter is Marcel Kittel as he comes up to the line and takes it from the world champion, Peter Sagan. The rider with the lowest cumulative time from the men's and women's races will pull on this year's yellow jersey, an accomplishment that will prove a career highlight for current and future stars. With challenging routes along some of this country's most picturesque landscapes, the Amgen Tour of California will once again provide compelling, world-class racing in a display of the strength of both the body and the mind. And it will be more than just a race for the best time. We have a lot of survivors out here. We are celebrating all of you. The 2018 Amgen Tour of California begins live on Sunday, May 13th on NBCSN at 4 p.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. in California and on the West Coast. For everyone here at NBC Sports, I'm Paul Burmeister.
Thanks for watching and enjoy this year's Amgen Tour of California.